this video, we will be talking about a subject I've covered before under the video titled The Lord's Child Trafficking Service. And using some elements from that video, uh, first I'll set a picture, uh, sort of understanding of confirmed, well, essentially confirmed in about the best capacity that could be today, the so-called official confirmation, and how that relates to ongoing operations which have not yet been, um, as it were, looked into, shall we say. So the first thing we'll start with are court cases, specifically three, and their relation to the, or similar to the uh, Jelaine Maxwell case that was, um, I guess you could say, infamous. So the first, we're going to look at someone named Margaret Cole, C-O-L-E, uh, out of Strongsville, Ohio, who had, had a news article written about her specific child trafficking operations and the court case that revolved around that, specifically with Salt Lake, Utah and Denton, Texas. She ran a adoption agency called European Adoption Consultants, allegedly, and was specifically, at least the news article I read, specifically referenced the, uh, what it said, brutal rape of a Polish girl who had been sold to parents uh, in the United States. Well, not really parents, but, you know, uh, they call them adopted parents. But either way, uh, she'd been sold as a commodity in the adoption scheme. Also, she was indicted on charges of bribery in Uganda, bribing uh, government officials and things like that, and a bunch of other things, but they were essentially all dropped, and she was helped out by essentially all of the different elements in the court system, just like we saw with the Jelaine Maxwell case. And she only got three months in jail, although the article said prison. So if she got three months in prison, that would be that would mean that she must have spent time in jail too. But I doubt it. Next we have Blake Cole, who was arrested in Montgomery County, which is in Ohio, and the city for that, the big city for Montgomery County, is Dayton. So that's where the court case was held, but I do not remember exactly in which part of Montgomery County. Anyway, it was for the rape of a five-year-old boy in a gas station bathroom, as according to the court docket document. So with the first one, the information is coming from a news source, which as we know today aren't very reputable. And the second one is actually coming from a court case, which is also equally untrustworthy because the there's a lot of fraud and falsification of documentation and things like that going on. But either way, these these elements establish an understanding of a pattern which relates to current tangible and confirmable activity in reality. Next, we have a court case of Crystal Cole, who was arrested with her 15-year-old daughter for shoplifting at a Walmart in Athens, Ohio. And uh, for uh, geographical reference, Dayton and Montgomery County are to the west, the western portion of Ohio, and then Athens is in the south of the state. Now, all of these individuals, just like with Jelaine Maxwell, they all claim mental disability and lack of mens rea because of mental incompetence. Now, of course, naturally, this is after being charged with really nasty and horrible and heinous activities they've been engaged in, and pretty much, by and large, they all get off, or they all get protected somehow, or they all get offed so that they don't talk. One of those things. But most of the time, they just get off, and they're protected and everything, and nothing really happens to them. 
and they get helped out from the so-called prosecution and the defense and the judge and everybody else involved including law enforcement of course so-called so clearly at the epicenter of our control structure are these elements of child trafficking being the core protected component of our modern society particularly despicable but it is also understandable in the context of they treat custody of children as as belonging under the rules of equity as it says the rules of equity shall prevail in all questions of child custody now also from that video of which it included the case of margaret cole i talked about something called the, a child link order form from Puebla, Texas, and how that relates to the Childlink Adoption Society in the United Kingdom run by Annie Mary Cole. So I think the obvious correlation between the last name Cole and activities involving this type of these types of activities is pretty apparent. Now in Dayton, Ohio, well actually in Trotwood, Ohio, which is also in Montgomery County, not far from Dayton. A Timothy Cole Jr. is listed for Itruscan LLC. And this is a really weird spelling of a name. Next, you have Cole's Custom Upholstery by Crystal D. Cole out of Dayton, Ohio, which is, again is in Montgomery County. And the reason why I keep saying Montgomery County as important is because the Hawking County Commission paid which is, by the way, controlled by two people, essentially. There's three people on the board, but only ever two people present at their meetings. The Hockey County Commission paid $10,500 to Montgomery County, County Coroner's Office. Now, normally when you're reading through these meeting minutes, you might look at that and say, oh, well, that's weird, but you wouldn't make the connection of Montgomery County to these activities with the Coles, the Blake Cole being arrested for raping a five-year-old child, the two different business filings in the area, and of course all the other connections to different trafficking operations under the Cole last name. Now also in Logan, Ohio, which is the seat for Hawking County, which again is, is southeast, uh, right above Athens, very far from Montgomery County for them to be paying that amount of money to a coroner's office is very odd and when you link it to the activities with the coals in the area it becomes very apparent what's going on now the coal coast services is a business out of logan ohio and they're currently involved in a construction project behind zanesville avenue if you think about child trafficking and buildings then it makes a lot of sense why you would have someone named Timothy A. Cole Jr. Again, Timothy Cole Jr. was listed on Itruscan of Trotwood, Ohio in Montgomery County. Well, here in Logan, Ohio, you have Timothy A. Cole Jr. and Crystal Lynn Cole, who are listed for Cole Co. Services, a construction company, which, mind you, does not have any business filings on it. Now, the Crystal Cole person is listed as a third grade elementary teacher at the Union Furnace Elementary School. Now, her daughter-in-law, Jamie Michelle Cole, is additionally a third grade teacher at the Trimble Elementary School. That's uh, not an accident. <clears throat> then you have Nicholas M. Cole, who is missing at a property address listed to be owned by Danny Neheiser. Then you have someone named Kayla Neheiser, same spelling, who's an educator with 4-H and looks after children 5 to 8 years old. I believe the pattern is very apparent here. But also the implications of these individuals running every single possible or involved in every single possible element that concerns the procurement of children of as they would say it at risk children 
so that they can then traffic them and have all these disgusting things that they can do to them and get away with because they control the structure. They're the financiers of everything and many other things. But we can get into that. Next in Logan, Ohio, the attorney, the city attorney, Abigail Saving, is listed as the res registered agent for the Children's Museum. And of course, Abigail Saving got that position clearly because of her family and their connection to all sorts of shady business in the area, including the Saving Hardware Store a cash business and most definitely a front. Now the next one is uh, Akron, Ohio, which is up towards the northwest. The Akron Children's Hospital health director is a Dr. Crystal Cole. Now we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about the elements of protection that these individuals generally enjoy when they do get caught for some of these heinous activities especially if they're procurers if they're involved in the actual system as with the margaret cole character and jelaine maxwell well they are by and large protected by so-called law enforcement so in hawking county in logan ohio the sheriff of hawking county is lonnie north and Deputy Moritz, a sheriff deputy under Lonnie North, was indicted in drug trafficking offenses, prostitution, coercion, uh, forcing others to take drugs and a bunch of other things, which naturally he was, again, a lot of those were dropped and it was just like a, a PR stunt basically where nothing actually happened to him, but they made it look like justice was served. Now, there's a listing, uh, a document that was shared, but then has since been censored online, been removed, in which it details Moritz and a Lieutenant Wilderman assaulting a man named Mr. Wolf because he basically turned his back on them and did for refused to comply to a, a restraining order. And in the document, it said that they feared for their lives because they thought there was a gun in the house. Now, that's obviously a pretext so that they can act like thugs. And then they tackle them on the porch and all that stuff. So from that, when you read it, you look at this and say, this is not the behavior of professionals. This is the behavior of essentially drug dealing thugs who kind of walk around in fear of being turned in by their own people or being whacked, hit, whatever you want to call it, taken out by their own people and also having their activities discovered by the population. So that's usually the reason why drug dealers and thugs go around being overly aggressive and unprofessional is because it come from, comes from a place of fear. And so... I would say for sure that they act like that out of fear, but it's not out of fear of this Mr. Wolf character because obviously they're not afraid of him at all. You know, They attack somebody who's turned their back on them because they themselves are weak. No respectable professional would ever attack somebody who's turned their back on them. That's just like kicking someone while they're down. It's just, it's not, you know, it's, it's disreputable. Now, the next person is Sean North. There can't be any relation there, of course, to the sheriff being Lanny North and then this character named Sean North, who sat on the city council, who voted for the election of something called code enforcement, whose primary purpose when they were activated, as it were, in Logan, was to kick people out of their homes, essentially an obvious element to create at-risk children who can then be taken by the individuals trafficking them in this structure. Now, he runs cash businesses, but the two businesses that he runs that are cash businesses are very important. The first one is a gym. That is the type of business where you could recruit hitmen, uh, enforcers specifically, people who are physically intimidating, who will go around and, and as it were, intimidate the riffraff into doing what they want. Obviously, that won't work on anybody who is a, a warfighter or a professional who comprehends practical force 
it's only for intimidation. So you go to a gym and you recruit bodybuilders and things like that. Most people who know how to fight would laugh at that because they would say bodybuilders have seen them try to fight and it doesn't work. But most people would probably submit to that because they're just average individuals who don't spend their entire lives training in martial arts or some sort of combat scenario. They're actually trying to uh, do something for their family or you know, they're working at a factory or they work in an office somewhere. That's sort of their life. They don't know the difference between a bodybuilder and a, a Marine, considering a lot of Marines look like just, you know, not something that you would find intimidating. Unless, of course, you got a fight with them. <laughs> but um, the next business that's important is a restaurant called Maya Burrito Company. And the listing for this particular business is Isamal Properties. Now, the Sean North's alleged wife is from Merida, Mexico. And a restaurant would provide the perfect location for moving children uh, specifically under the guise of them being the children of immigrants from Mexico through this restaurant business, because no, no one would be the wiser most of the time in this town. People aren't familiar with the differences and things like that. Um, and the other people that actually control the town aren't really afraid of that anyway. All they want is, uh, is to essentially hide their activities, I believe, because if it were known, then the residents in Logan, the ones who have kids and family and whatnot, would be much more likely to protect their children from specifically being taken under false pretense, right? That's how they do this. They make at-risk children, as they call it, in a quote-unquote broken home, which they've broken essentially through various mechanisms and strategies. And then they come in and say, we're going to care for your child better than you can because we've put you into this miserable situation on purpose specifically so that your child can get disappeared into a system because of a clerical error. That is exactly how they operate it, except there is no accident to it. It is a pattern of conduct. It is obviously an operation. Now, the last thing that we'll look at for the purpose of this video are suspicious property purchases in Logan, specifically Logan, Ohio. And the way it relates to not just market value, but the actual manipulation of the housing market itself, the driving people out of their homes for the ability to essentially steal their children. Officially, of course, right? They never do anything vigilante. They never do vigilantism, right? It's always under the auspices of the government. That is exactly the best way that they can traffic children with nobody being the wiser because nobody stands up to the government because of quote unquote brainwashing even though the government isn't real and then of course they've got embedded infiltrators and agents to constantly dissuade people from quote unquote going off on their own and taking justice into their own hands and all this other nonsense and like a, a guy I overheard in a cafe once who said that the upturned upside down flag uh, actually yesterday uh, was meant overthrow of the government, which of course it doesn't. That's a lie, but it's a very targeted lie. There's thought and effort behind it. And just to clarify for those of you who are going to be watching this, and I have an idea who might be, the upside down flag has always meant distress, being in distress. And it's just like when you go to a military base, you hand an ID or a driver's license upside down to the gate guard, that is a sign of being in distress. Generally speaking, when something is given or shown to be upside down, it is a distress signal. Essentially the same thing as sending out a distress signal on a ship, a beacon or whatever, SLS, all that stuff. So as far as the property filings go, the suspicious numbers, we have a property of under Benjamin Allen Cole, which was sold at 150,000 from the original sale price of 204,000 and the property is valued at 360,650. Now these original sellers, Marilyn and Glenn Rickey, are dead. The next 
interesting element is the sale of a property to a Sherry Lynn Cole for $28,900 with the first sale at $28,000 and the property is valued at $308,140. That is a huge discrepancy and it's not the only one. Courtney Morgan Cole bought property for $10,000 which is valued at $356,370. And of course this stuff goes on, on and on and on and on. And I believe I've shown why it's very apparent that not only are these people protected, but the only true justice that would ever come to them is that of so-called vigilante justice or outside of the control of the lauded official mechanisms, considering they are all involved.